Welcome back to my channel, guys. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my 2020 reading list and kind of giving you guys like a review of the books that I read. One of my New Year's resolutions this year was to read more and I'm going to tell you that I definitely did that. Before this year, I literally hated reading and I read 19 books this year, not including the 14 books that I read in the Bible. 23? Oh my gosh, no, that's not right. 30? 33? I've read 33 books, including the books, the fiction books that I've read, like, on my own. Books that I've read in school. And then I've read 14 books out of the Bible. First, I'm going to go through the books that I've read, like, on my own time. And then I'm going to go through the books that I read in school to tell you if they're worth reading on your own time or not. And I'm not really going to touch on the books that I read in the Bible just because, like, there's so many books in the Bible. Um, I could just tell you, like, my favorite. So, like, my favorite in the Old Testament. So I read from Genesis to, to Samuel. And then in the New Testament, I read from Matthew to John. John, the first book of John um, and my favorite book in the Old Testament is probably Genesis just because it's like the creation of everything which I think is really awesome and then my favorite book in the New Testament is probably Luke I would say the first book that I read this year was Miracles from Heaven and this is about a girl that falls into a tree wait <laughs> Why did I start out? <laughs> okay, pretty much this is what happens. I'm pretty sure she has like stomach cancer or something and she has something that deals with her um, stomach and she is playing outside with her family. She falls into a tree. There's like literally no chance of anyone surviving the fall that she had. She dies and goes to heaven and she obviously like sees everything and then they actually find her that she is still living. They go through like surgery and stuff and of course the family is like praying over her body. They are Christians um, and this is a true story as well which is crazy. She ends up living and telling her story about how she went to heaven Heaven. and um, this is definitely not my favorite Christian book that I've ever read um, the movie in my opinion is better um, so if you want to watch the movie then that would be great I would probably give this book a two out of five just because I didn't like the structure it goes from like present tense to like past tense and like a bunch of different things and I didn't really like that structure in my personal opinion. The story is great how she goes to Jesus and like finds him and how she survives that is just like crazy to me and so that's definitely a great part of the story but in my opinion it wasn't one of my favorite books. The next book that I read was Heaven is for Real and this is definitely my favorite Christian book. I think I would give this book probably a 4.5 out of 5 just because the story is like amazing. There also is a movie so if you're not a book person you can definitely watch the movie. The book and the movie are both equally good so whatever one you want to watch or read is fine. Pretty much it's kind of the same situation. He has like, I don't know if it was like a ruptured appendix or something in his body like burst open and he was like vomiting everywhere and so they had to take him into surgery and they really thought that he was not going to survive. He ends up surviving and tells his story about like how he's seen all these things in heaven and things that he would not have known as a four year old child. That is a great story and I love that book so much. The next book I read was The Silent Patient. Oh my gosh guys, this is the best book. I have ever read in my entire life. I give this book a thousand out of five stars because it's a mystery. So pretty much this girl, she's a painter and all of a sudden she kills her husband and she never speaks another word again. And so this character comes in and he's trying to get her to talk to try to find out what happened on that night and you think you know how it's gonna plan out the entire book until you get to like the very last chapter and you, you're, you're like so amazed at what happened. This is like the best well-written book ever. Like, I can't even um, like tell you. There's so much action. There's, well not really action, but like there's so much mystery and 
Oh my gosh, guys, I can't even begin to tell you how good this book is. No matter what type of books you like to read, you need to read this book. The next book was Me Before You. This is kind of like a love story. Um, it's about a guy that's in a wheelchair and this woman comes to help him and he's like a really, really grumpy man. And um, so they end up falling in love and um, he ends up changing because of her like positive attitude. Um, and this was the first novel that I have ever cried at the end because I have never been so emotionally connected to two fictional characters before. It is definitely one of the best romance novels, but the ending is just so terrible. Like, I wish it would have ended differently. There also is a movie. Um, the book is definitely a lot slower than the movie and there are some sections in the book that are a little bit slower um, but once you get past that it's like really good and then the movie after you read the book the movie is just like done and over and you're like what the heck like how did that even happen so I would give this book probably a four out of five just because it ripped my soul out <laughs> I was so upset by the end of this book and I was like dwelling on it. Actually, maybe I should give this book a 5 out of 5 because it's definitely one of my favorite books and I was like determined to watch the movie after I finished this book. For the author, I give him so much, or her, I don't know if it was a girl or a guy, but um, I give them so much credit because I thought that these characters were real people and it's just amazing how literature can do that to you. The next book I read was You're Amazing. I actually have this one. So this is a Christian book and it's kind of like a guide to life. Each chapter is about like a different thing. So celebrate your weaknesses and then it goes, it gives you like a little bit of strict scripture and some things to help you get through that. And then it says a quote to remember, time for God. So it says journal about your weaknesses today and make it count. So the next time your weaknesses get the best of you, get excited about your mistakes and thank God for his strength. So it's kind of just like a book for Christians to kind of just read along and try to become a better Christian. This is an amazing book. I would also give this one a 5 out of 5. This is such a great guide to life and I love this book so much and this book definitely helped me a lot in my relationship with God and growing that so much. The next book I read was Deep and Dark and Dangerous. They go to a place where they used to go when her parents were kids and um so there's a reason that they hadn't gone back there for a while and the mother is like devastated she doesn't want to go there ever again and so they meet this girl and they start hanging out with her and she doesn't come around when her like aunt is around um so they just try to like figure out what's going on with this girl and why is my mom freaking out every time that we come here and like what are the mysteries behind why everyone is so against this area. It's a great book. It is a kind of like mystery, kind of like um, thriller kind of book. I give that book a five out of five. The next one was called January 1st, which is about a girl with schizophrenia and her father just tries to help her with the schizophrenia. And this book, I would probably give a two out of five because um, I, it was really slow. The way that the father writes the book is not my favorite. I feel like he's really repetitive and the way that he handles things um, probably isn't the best. And I feel like he kind of, toward the end of the book, kind of directs the situation at himself. And I thought that was a little weird. Um, if it weren't for the fact that the book was about schizophrenia, I probably wouldn't have kept reading it. The reason that I continued to read through the whole thing was that so I could get as much information about schizophrenia as I could because I don't really know much about it. So I wanted to enhance my knowledge on that subject and kind of learn more about it. Um, but it definitely was not one of my favorite books and I would not read it again. The next book was called The Cabin at the End of the World. And I actually did not read this whole book uh, because I started getting nightmares from reading the first um, part of the book. That's how scary it is pretty much at the beginning of the book. Um, there's this girl and her father and they're in a cabin and these people start showing up at her house and they're like threatening to beat down the door and like 
they say they need to come in because if you don't allow us to co to come in, like your fate is in our hands and we need to come in so that the world doesn't end or something weird. I never ended up finishing it. I did figure out like I watched a book summary and they told like what happened in the book and I definitely would have been very uncomfortable reading that book. Um, it was just too realistic for me and that's definitely something that could happen in real life and I don't really like reading books like that. I'd rather read books that um, are more on the fictional side and not something that could actually happen in real life. I would give that book a 1 out of 5 just because I did not read the whole thing and it gave me nightmares. The next book is the After series. This series actually contains five books. So the first one is After. They actually have a movie. The second one is After We Collided. The third one is After We Fell. And then this one is After Ever Happy. And then the final book is Before. So it's kind of like before Tessa and Hardin met. The first book is kind of about like how they met. And so obviously that one's a great one because like it's the beginning of the whole story. The second one goes more into like Tessa and Hardin's family life. Um, the third one deals more about like careers and kind of going off into the real world and like finding themselves in a way. And then the fourth book is really when Hardin transforms from a boy into a man. And I think the fourth book is definitely my favorite book, After Ever Happy. Definitely the best book out of the series in my opinion because, well, the first and the last book are definitely two of the best out of the series. If I had to put it in order, I would probably go the fourth book, the first book, the second, the third book. Um, for some reason, the third book is always like the worst in a series, I feel like. Not that the book was bad, but like it was like more on the slow side. The thing that I really like about the After series is that it's written so well because the first book is really about Tessa. It's really centered around Tessa and how she's meeting this guy and he's like destroying her and stuff. Um, and then the last book is really about Hardin changing from this insecure drunk boy into a man. And the transition of his character is just like so uplifting and the way that he fights for Tessa is just like so amazing and I just love that about his character. And Anna Todd, which is the author of these books, is has just like such a good like sense of humor because I have been like so upset throughout this book. I've been like laughing my butt off. The humor, the emotion that comes in this book is just like so great and it's just like a great series. They are pretty long books. Um, the longest book I think is like 800 pages, which is like a lot. It's either 600 or 800, um, but yeah, they're pretty long, but they're really easy to read. They don't have like really hard vocabulary. It took me like a month to read each of the books, um, but obviously the time was like spread out. Another thing I wanted to mention was that I read The Silent Patient in two days, and it was like 400 pages. That's how good that book is. I read it in two days crazy. And I believe I read Me Before You in five days. For the after series, I probably would not recommend the book to anyone that's under 18. Um, I'm 17 and I thought that the scenes were a little bit too mature for me personally. Um, there's a lot of sex scenes in the books and in the movies. The second movie is actually rated R. Um, if I would have known that there would be so many sex scenes, I probably would have waited a little couple more years to read the books. Um, but yeah, definitely an R-rated book in my opinion because your imagination can just go wherever it wants. And I would definitely give the After Series a 5 out of 5. The next book that I partially read was um, Made For More, and this is also another Christian book. I'm pretty sure I got it from my church. I literally found it around my house and was like, okay, I'm gonna read this. I ended up only getting halfway through it because it started getting like boring to me just because I had already learned everything that was in the book. If you are a new Christian or you are struggling in your faith, it's definitely a great book to read because it talks about how like different scientists or big figures in the world like Einstein, they talk about his religious beliefs and like what he has to say about religion through the scientific lens of it. The next book that I read was The Giver. I actually read this book um, in eighth grade and I decided to read it again because I remembered really liking it. Um, so this book is about a boy 
who is in like this really weird society. They don't see any color. They are very strict on their jobs and everything. So it's kind of like in the future in a sense. And he gets a very important job in the um, society that they're living in. And pretty much he starts getting like memories and like colors and stuff. So they see everything in black and white. And he starts realizing that like their society is really weird and that emotions are actually really good and it's good to have emotions and like so it kind of just takes you through the journey of him and like his life. Um, I would give this book a 4 out of 5. It's definitely not the most advanced book. You can probably read it in a couple days. It is more on the slow side in my opinion but for some reason, it really intrigued me. There's actually three more books in the series, Gathering Blue, Messenger, and Sun. I am currently reading Gathering Blue, and then apparently the fourth book, Sun, is probably the best book out of the series because it ties the giver to, like, everything. Um, so I guess I will just have to catch you guys up next year when I finish that series um, and tell you how that book went. Last but not least, the last book that I read, and I just finished it a couple days ago was Where the Crawdads Sing. This one is a lot about like nature and it's about this girl and she lives on the estuary, not an estuary, what am I talking about? She lives on the marsh. She's known as the marsh girl and pretty much um, her whole family leaves her by the end of the book and she meets a couple love interests throughout the way. It's really hard to talk about books when you can't like talk about the plot. I'll just read the inside of the book to kind of, I'll, uh, I'll just read. For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in the late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the galls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be touched and loved. When two men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens her to a new life until the unthinkable happens. You don't find out until like the very very end of the book, the last couple pages, um, if someone killed Chase or if it was an accident and he killed himself, um, which is crazy because the whole book you're like, I think I know who did it, who did it, or like if he did it, um, and then it's kind of thrown for a loom and you kind of are like okay so what happens next and it's kind of one of those kind of like mystery but it's like less intense than like a thriller book it's more on like the easy end um and personally in my opinion it's more of a romance novel than like a murder case because they talk more about like kaya and nature and like the two men that come into her life more than the killing, in my opinion. I would give this book a 3.5 out of 5, just because it was pretty slow in the beginning. It wasn't as thrilling as a typical murder novel. Um, I expected it to be, like, with more action and stuff, but there's really, like, not that much action in it. I probably will not end up reading it ever again, but... I'm kind of glad that I read it in a way. And of course there is a happy ending at the end, kind of. You're just gonna have to read it if you wanna find out. Those are all the books that I read on my free time and now I'm going to go through the books that I read in school and tell you like if they're worth reading outside of school, kind of like what they're about and like things like that. So the first book that I read was Lord of the Flies. It's about this these boys that end up on this island by themselves and they end up like fighting back and forth with, with each other and I would give this book a zero out of five because I don't I didn't understand the point of the book and I really don't even remember what we did with this book in school. The second book was Things Fall Apart which I don't even remember the plot of this book. Like, I don't even remember what happened. That's how bad the book was. <laughs> Not that the book was bad. The book was intriguing, but I would never read it again. Zero out of five for me. The next one was Macbeth. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a Shakespeare um, play. 
Um, I will give this a 1 out of 5 just because the videos that we watched were kind of intriguing and I kind of enjoyed the videos. Um, but I find it hard for me to read plays just because they're just like not the same language that we typically read today. The activities that we did do with this play though were like kind of fun so I'll give it a 1 out of 5 for that. And then the book that we just finished in 11th grade was In Cold Blood. In Cold Blood is about two killers that kill a whole family and it just takes you through the story of like what they were doing on those days, um, how people caught them, and what happened after they got caught, and mm, this book I would probably give a 1 out of 5 as well. I'm not a big fan of like true novels. I really like fiction because you can really, the author can really like get you involved in the story and kind of like add their own things to it. When it's a true crime novel, it's just like... It's not as fun, you know? And those are all of the 19 books that I've read this year, or 33 if we're gonna include the books out of the Bible that I read. If I had to do one for each category, if it was the murder thriller category, I would definitely do The Silent Patient. If it was a love story, I would definitely do the after series because that is, those books are just great. If you are under 18, I would say Me Before You. That's a great one. It will definitely pull at your heart a little bit, but that's okay. And then if I had to give you a religious book to read, I would probably do Heaven Is For Real or watch the movie, either one. And then my top five of all time from this whole list would be number one, Silent Patient of course. Two would be the after series. I'm just putting those all together. I did not read the book before because in the after series it talks about like their life before they met each other so I didn't really think it was necessary to read the fifth book. Third one would be Me Before You. Fourth one would be Deep and Dark and Dangerous. And then the fifth book I would say Heaven is for Real. Let me know if you've read any of these books before and let me know your thoughts on their books. If you agree with me or disagree with me, I don't really care. Just tell me your thoughts on the books or if you have any book suggestions that you think I would really like, please drop them in the comments and I would love to see them. See you in my next video.